Lynn, you know, this weekend. So, I mean, if, I don't know if you saw the shot he hit to the uh, par four ninth. I mean, that shot in the fairway, he just drilled a, 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 a drive off the tee. His ball landed in a divot on the fairway, and he was able to hit that about 217 yards to the green. And then he he, he uh, drained a 49-footer for birdie. Mm-hmm. It was his last uh, hole, so it was a good way to kind of uh, finish the round and, you know, got him to nine under, two shots ahead of Justin Rose. And so great momentum going into the weekend for sure for um, Gary Woodland. Yeah, so I guess you believe in both of those. We'll definitely keep an eye on those guys as they approach um, on Saturday. So we are with uh, Ann Lagoria of WFAN. Um, now, who are you expecting to come out today, make their move? Who's a guy that's primed to light up the course today, in your opinion? Well, I mean, Rory McIlroy. I, I, you know, if Rory could, uh, you know, get rid of his mistakes, <laughs> age-old, you know, issue here in golf. Um, Rory McIlroy has the power to play well here. He just has to be more accurate. His short game has to be better. But um, yesterday, just when you thought, you know, he tied for the lead or at least threatened for the lead, he bogeyed the 13th. Then he double bogeyed the par 5 14. And then he turned it around and he birdied 15 and 16. So what we're seeing from Rory is this roller coaster, particularly on the back nine. And if he can, you know, just eliminate the, the the mishaps Rory has you know he played so well last week winning the Canadian Open he's uh, four shots back he's five under overall he, he could be right in there 100% um, him and him and Kepka obviously are are floating around there as you expect as we approach Saturday and Sunday um, okay Tiger Woods he's sitting at even right now nine strokes off the lead he struggled with his putter yesterday. Like he's had a he had a lot of scoring opportunities. He, I mean, he almost had a bogey free round. I think he had two at the end of the uh, I think the last two of the back nine. Um, but what do you need to see from him? What do you need to see from Tiger today for him to get into striking distance on Sunday? Well, Tiger has played very conservative this week. Um, you know, he made 14 straight pars yesterday, and then unfortunately, this was you know, well, he he brooded 11, and then. He, uh, you know, he started on the back, and then he finished with a bogey, bogey, number eight, number nine. He, as you mentioned, did not putt well. He has not really been, sh- you know, sharp on the greens. Um, I haven't seen him. He, he He's going to have to get on a, a on a putting streak and, and just start, you know, um, you know, making putts. Bottom line, he has to make putts, and I, I think he has to play a little more aggressively. He has nine shots back. If the guys at the top falter, which is, is you know, very possible, on this golf course, um, you know, Tiger and his Tiger gets on a on a roll like we've seen him do. Um, obviously, he knows how to win here in 2000. I was here when he destroyed the field by 15 shots. And um, if he can kind of reach back to the magic of Tiger of old and 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 really start making putts, you know, obviously keep his tee shots on the fairway. You don't want to be in the rough. Then um, you know he's he's capable of still um, contending this weekend. Okay, okay. And uh, Brooks Kepka, who has just been on a tear, seems like a machine, looks like a machine. Uh, he said yesterday in his interview, he's right where he wants to be, five strokes off the lead. What are your thoughts on Brooks, and, and how high are you on him that he can capture his fifth major here? Well, I am a huge Brooks Kepka fan. I don't think there's anybody out there who is more mentally strong or physically strong. I mean, Brooks Kepka does a great job at just getting rid of all the distractions, anything that can enter one's mind um, when you're playing in these high-pressured situations. Brooks Kepka knows how to handle it in the majors. He just knows how to just focus on one shot at a time, not let the pressure get to you. Um, you know, he was, said he was pleased with his ball striking yesterday. He hit it 12 of 14 fairways, 15 of 18 greens. He shot 269 in both uh, Thursday and Friday, but he said he hit the ball better yesterday even though he had the same score, he's only five shots back. So Brooks Kepka is very capable of uh, being right in there this weekend. And uh, wouldn't it be great if he became the first guy since 1905 to win three straight open titles? Wow. 1905, Stephen. That's a long time. <laughs> and he, you know, he peaks during these majors, and uh, you, you, you can't bet against him. The guy is just phenomenal. 
How about that stat, stat by the great Anne Ligori? Great job. All right, last one here before we let you go. Um, give me your most disappointing and most impressive golfer uh, this weekend or these first two days that you just said, man, I expected more from this guy. And you maybe looked at another golfer and said, wow, I didn't expect that from him. Well, let's see. Um, Patrick Reed, you saw him break his club. Yes, <laughs> I, I did. You, I don't know if you watched that. That's hard to do. You have to have pretty strong thighs to break a still shafted club. So, you know, I'd like to see more from Patrick Reed, um, you know, who won the Masters, uh, you know, uh, what when was it, two years ago. Um, you know, I'd just like to see more from him. He can really play, but we haven't seen anything since he won the Masters. And, you know, I am, I'm just unexpectedly um, – uh, pleased with Gary Woodland's play. He kind of came out of nowhere at this event, and uh, he's, he, we know he has the power. We know he can he can hit the, the you know his tee shots a mile. But to see him put it all together, you know, all his shot making has been really fascinating. So I'm pleased with the way Gary Woodland is playing. And um, to answer your question, um, it, it would be great to see Patrick Reed kind of uh, get out of his own way and start playing the kind of golf that, that we know he can play. Great job, Ann. Thank you so much for giving me the time. You can follow Ann Ligori on Twitter, at Ann Ligori. Very simple. Um, and um, thank you again for coming on. I really appreciate it, and you enjoy the rest of the Open. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. All right, here, as the Twins continue to roll here, 45 wins, 11 games up here in the Central. It just seems like they continue to take two out of three, and they're going to have to here as they really start to beat up here on the division, including the Tigers, Royals, and White Sox. They um, they just took two out of three against uh, the Mariners. They dropped one, which really made me uh, – this, this one bothered me. It was on Wednesday night. They're down 6-1. They come back. They tie it up 6-6 on a Buxton two-run home run. They scored three in the eighth, two in the ninth. And, and then uh, the one, the only, Tyler Duffy comes in gives up three runs. Granted, Sano had a bad error. But this is becoming a little problematic for me with the Twins in the sense that if they don't fix this bullpen issue, they're going to regret it deeply when it comes to October. Because when you go to Houston, and you go to New York, and you go to these bigger teams that they are not the Royals, they are not the White Sox, they are not the Mariners, when you are up 3-1 in the seventh inning, you need to win that game, okay? The Twins are 21st in bullpen ERA in the last 10 games this month. The Twins bullpen have made a combined 34 appearances going 2-2 two two with 3 saves, 3 holds, and a blown save, and a 6.2. 8-5 ERA, okay? It, it, it has become, you know, and there hasn't been a lot of negative to the season, uh, clearly. I mean, they've completely shocked everyone, including the fan base, including the MLB, maybe including themselves. But they're starting pitching, which is fourth in baseball right now, and an offense that really, they lead the league in batting average, they lead the league in home runs, they lead the league in RBIs. They need to have a good at least decent bullpen and right now it's bad they don't have a set closer it's between Blake Parker and Taylor Rogers which I don't like I like having roles filled out early I don't like having um you know players not know when they're going to come in on certain nights oh this guy's going to save it on this night and then this guy's going to save it on the other and um you know to me you look at the past World Series winners and they have one thing in common they have a great bullpen Okay, last year the Red Sox, 2018, they had the ninth best bullpen in the major leagues. And I'll also tell them I'll tell them they're starting pitching as well. Red Sox had the ninth best bullpen in the league and the eighth best starting pitching in the league. In 2017, the Astros had the sixth best starting pitching and the seventeenth best bullpen. Now that's average, but the Astros starting pitching was phenomenal. Now, in this case, you know, the twins obviously don't have big names they don't have the Max Scherzers they don't have the Jacob DeGroms they're stuck with Odorizzi and Breros and Gibson and, and they've all pitched pretty well this year Odorizzi especially Odorizzi is a candidate for a Cy Young award winner um, but they don't have the the pitching that I can trust okay and when I looked at the Astros you know two years ago Verlander Keiko, Cole I mean they had some great outstanding not even close to guys like Gibson Breros and Odorizzi. So that's one exception that the Astros had the 17th best bullpen. 2016, the Cubs had the best starting pitching in the league and the 8th best bullpen. And then Kansas City, 
who had okay starting pitching, had the second best bullpen in the league that year, and they won the World Series. Okay, now solutions. What are we going to do? First thing you think, okay, go trade for a reliever, go trade. Because I was in favor of going to get a starter. And I talked, I was on um, Seth Topal's radio show today, The Scoop, in Redwood Falls. And he asked me, what do you feel about Max Scherzer? I kind of chuckled at it because, number one, it's just never been in the Twins' arsenal to go after a player like Max Scherzer, to pay for a guy like Max Scherzer. To me, it's more of a... Okay, when I was in favor of getting a starting pitcher, it was go get Madison Bumgarner, go give up Nick Gordon for him, go give up some prospects because you've built that farm system up and you've been bad for an X amount of years. You have the the leeway to give away a prospect like that for a Madison Bumgarner. Uh, you know, you also think about Chris Archer. But over these last couple weeks, man, it's completely shifted to me that the Twins need bullpen. And, and that's what I'm going to fire at you guys today. I think they should go after a few guys. I'll I'll talk about one right now, and that's Sean Doolittle. He's a lefty, 32 years old, plays for the Nationals. Um, He's got a 6.5 million team option for 2020. This year he has a 3.5 ERA, um, 27 and a half innings pitched. Last year in 2018, he had a 1.6 ERA. He had, uh, you know, pitched 45 innings. This is a guy that can come in here. And he has he has been a model of consistency over his entire pretty much big league career. He's worked as a reliever for eight years. He's operated in high leverage save situations for the for the for the vast majority of his, of his career. Um, and I think the big question now is: Are the Nationals going to sell? Because they're currently fighting an uphill battle in the NL East right now. They obviously with Harper gone. They, they've lost their juice to their franchise. But Sean Doolittle is someone that I think the Twins should definitely consider pursuing. Like I said, to me it's very, um, you know what you're going to get with him. I don't think he can come in here and implode. It's not like a big city like New York where you're worried about, okay, kind of like that Sonny Gray instance where the Yankees traded for Sonny Gray who came from Oakland, but the stage was too big for him when it came to New York. I don't think people look at it like that way going to Minnesota. So I think Sean Doolittle is definitely someone that the Twins should consider getting. Um, but but here's my thing on this whole take of make sure you have zero regrets come October. Okay, Make sure as a Twins organization, as a fan base, that we all don't sit back and say, man, if we would have done this or if we would have we would have traded for this guy or if we would have maybe put a little more emphasis on this. That's what I don't want this season. Because right now, you rather the bullpen be bad. And, and you rather them show that they're inconsistent and, and they're not good enough in June. You know, you don't want to have these problems. You don't want to have the bullpen overachieve, overachieve, get to October, implode, and then you're stuck. You, you, this is, you know, timing is everything in sports, right? Timing and everything is really in life. And when it comes to the bullpen right now, I think it's good timing that the Twins are starting to see this. And I just don't want to I don't want to go on with this season with any regrets going towards the postseason. You do not know when you're going to get back here. When the Twins made it to the wild card two years ago and played the Yankees, I thought, okay, this is the start of something really awesome. They've got something going. Paul Milder wins um, manager of the year. You had some, some, some really nice pieces. Everything seemed to fall together. The younger guys were playing well. What happened next year? Complete dud, disappointment, and, and really just it was an awful season with the injuries, with the inconsistency. You got rid of your manager, and, and you didn't know where you were going from there. There was a lot of questions coming in to 2019 with the Twins. I know they picked up Marwin Gonzalez. They made some nice additions with Nelson Cruz. That you know, Getting Michael Pineda uh, healthy back. Um, this was a team that you didn't know what was it going to be. And now they sit at 45 and 22, 11 up in the AL Central. You need to go for you need to go for a championship. You need to go for a World Series. There shouldn't be any hesitation here, especially because you have a ton of assets in your farm system. You 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 stink for years to have the opportunity to draft and to really um, you know uh, increase your farm system 
and to get guys that you believe that are going to help your team in the future. And when you're bad for years, you have a surplus of those guys. When you have a surplus of those guys, you're able to trade them for guys like Madison Bumgarner, for guys like Chris Archer, for guys like Sean Doolittle, 